Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be discussing the much anticipated Windows Vista upgrade attempt on the iPod running Mojo Pack, which if you missed the initial video, we took a look at a pretty cool piece of software called Mojo Pack, which allows you to run a portable instance of Windows XP off of an iPod or another USB storage device. And at the end of that video, I talked about the possibility of upgrading what what I thought was a Windows XP installation on this iPod to Windows Vista. And we actually got this set up to load and I ended off that video with, well, we'll take a look at this next time, and we ended the video off there. But unfortunately, I'm going to cut right to the chase. There is no way we're going to be able to do this, and we're going to be talking about why in today's video. The short of it is, I kind of messed up, because what I said in the initial video, I said a couple times that, oh, this is like a Windows XP virtual machine running off of this iPod. Yeah, you think we can upgrade this thing to Windows Vista? It is a virtual machine. It's certainly possible. <laughs> That's actually not true, and a couple people pointed this out to me, uh, that this is not a completely independent installation of Windows XP, and it's not a virtual machine. It is still virtualization, and that is mentioned very frequently many times on the website. It's still running a Windows XP environment from this iPod, but it is more similar to a sandbox application, kind of like sandboxy, where it is a separate environment that allows you to run programs without affecting your host computer, but it relies on the host computer to function properly. Like you have to have an installation of Windows to use Sandboxy. This is exactly the same thing here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we've got the iPod opened up here in the file browser. You can see we've got start.exe. This is the application you can use to start Mojo Pack. And I want to point out the size of the Windows folder. Now it has grown since the last video because it was initially 672 kilobytes. That's how much space it took up on the disk. Now, I had someone point out that, well, that isn't really possible for a Windows XP installation to be slimmed down that much because a Windows 3.1 installation's Windows folder takes up more space than that. It takes up, at least in, in my virtual machine, which does have a couple of programs installed, so there could have been some files written to the Windows folder. It currently takes up almost 18 megabytes in size. So that probably makes some of you wonder, well, how is this possible? Well, it's not, because if we go into the Windows folder, you're missing a lot of files. Like, just to show you, let's open up the Windows folder from my computer here. We'll go to C, Windows, we'll show contents. And you can see there's a lot more files in here. We can highlight all of them. 132 items selected. How many do we got in here? 24. There's no executable files in this folder here. You go into System32, and this is not a complete System32 folder. The only EXE is this tablet PC uh, platform component here. And this is obviously because this is not a complete installation of Windows XP. Like I said, it's more like a sandboxed environment. And just to show you, if I go into the start menu here, we're in the Mojo Pack environment now. I go to my computer and go into the C drive, or what it is, you know, calling the C drive here which is the iPod. You've got the same files here, but we go into the Windows folder and you can see that we've got uh, way more files in here, right? We've got Explore, Notepad, RegEdit, and just to show you if you're wondering, no, running Mojo Pack does not like automatically increase the size of the Windows folder on the disk, but Mojo Pack allows the environment to see that same folder. Even if I go back here and go to the E drive and go into Windows, it has all the same folders and files in here that it had on the C drive. So that's what Mojo Pack is doing. Mojo Pack is uh, kind of artificially inflating the size of this by utilizing files from the host computer. So yeah, that's how Mojo Pack actually works. Uh, so I, I made some modifications to that original video by using YouTube's editing tool. So I like edited out the part where I said, oh, this is just like any other virtual machine software like VMware or VirtualBox. No, it's not. That isn't true. And like, you're not going to be able to take this iPod and plug it into a computer and try to boot off of it. This also explains how Mojo Pack was even able to exist exist in the first place because think about it. If Mojo Pack was a true virtual machine software, 
you would need to have a copy of Windows XP to install on it. And there's no way that RingCube, who is the company behind MojoPack, would be able to give that to you for free, because keep in mind, MojoPack was free to download for personal use. So for them to distribute a copy of XP, they would have to negotiate a licensing agreement with Microsoft, kind of like how an OEM has to do. And for them to make any money, they would have to charge you for the software. So just the very fact that the software is free is a pretty big giveaway as well. But that isn't to say that the changes you make in the Mojo Pack environment will take effect on the host environment, because if you watch the original video, you'll know that we installed Doom 2 and Microsoft Office in this environment. So I go to all programs, Microsoft Office is here, Office 2003. I can go to the host computer and go in here, go to all programs, and Microsoft Office is here, but it's 2010 and not 2003. So you're still able to treat this as if it were kind of like an XP virtual machine because the changes you make in this environment will not take effect on the host computer. At least most of the time, that's how it's supposed to work. RingCube did acknowledge a bug that could allow changes made in the Mojo Pack environment to take effect on the host PC. The only source I have with this information is a Wikipedia page, which uh, it does cite the RingCube website as where it got this information from. But obviously that site does not exist anymore, and I tried pasting the URL into the Wayback Machine, and the page is archived, but it's just a blank page that looks like this. There's no text on it. So this apparently was a bug, and I'm just going to read part of the Wikipedia page here. It says, however, it is possible for a user to modify MojoPack system files, which are then reflected to the same system files of the host PC. So the current level of isolation between the virtual environment and the host PC is not as strong as per provided by full machine virtualization technologies like VMware. RingCube has stated that this is a known bug which will be addressed in a future version of MojoPack. And that version, I assume, never came out because MojoPack was eventually discontinued and it does not exist anymore. Now, I actually got a comment on the original video and somebody said that at least they thought that this exact thing was happening when I tried to install Office 2003. There was a point when I, I finished the installation of Office 2003 in the Mojo Pack environment, and I swapped to the host computer, and the Office 2003 installer was opened up. And the person said in their comment that that could be the application leaking outside of the Mojo Pack environment, which is absolutely a problem because that's not supposed to happen. I don't think this is the case. I just think that when you put in the Office 2003 CD, that the setup automatically starts. So we're going to test that out here and see if it happens. So the disk is put in. We're here on the host environment and we're just gonna wait and see what happens and it is starting up so we'll see if it gets to the product key screen because that's the screen it was on in, in the original video and that's why I didn't say anything because I just figured that that's exactly what was going on and yeah here we are so I have not interacted with the computer at all it just automatically started up and took us to the product key screen which is where it was in the original video so that is totally normal behavior that is not an instance of that bug occurring but Let's just see what happens. Again, here is the Windows Vista Home Premium Upgrade CD. If the camera wants to focus there, it looks like it's not going to, but whatever. We're gonna pop this disc in and we're gonna swap back over to the Mojo Pack environment. Now you'll remember if you saw the original video that we got the setup to run. So it's going to start up here and I know it's gonna launch the setup, but it's probably gonna fail at some point. Okay, so upgrade has been disabled. There's not enough space to upgrade Windows on partition C. Well, we have plenty of free space. I mean, the, the iPod does. We've got 26.4 gigs of free space on the iPod. Oh, no, no drives were found. There you go. So there's absolutely no drives found at all. Okay, that makes sense. So it's not gonna find any drives. That's why that message was appearing. So we cannot do the upgrade. We can certainly not do a clean install or anything. So there's what happens uh, if you try to run the Windows Vista setup from within the Mojo Pack environment. It's uh, it's not going to work. And well, I've already explained why. So we're going to close out of it. There are a couple of other things I want to try out. Uh, these were both suggested in uh, multiple comments. One of them is what happens when you try to turn off the computer from the Mojo Pack environment? Will it just quit Mojo Pack or will it turn off? off you know the entire computer my guess is it's just going to close out a mojo pack here yep that's exactly what it does so it just closes out a mojo pack it says logging off and 
it should just take us back to the host environment unloading see unloading user profile there you go so the user profile and that you know the fact that the windows folder was larger than the host computer was was seeing it as you know within the mojo pack drive here is all temporary all of that's done uh, when mojo pack starts up so the other thing that i had a couple of people ask is what would happen if you try to plug this into a windows 10 machine or just a machine running a newer copy of windows well spoiler it doesn't work but i'm going to show you exactly how it doesn't work let's go check that out all right so here we are on my windows 10 computer and you can see that the drive shows up just like it did on the xp machine so here it is and that is to be expected and what happens when we run it well this happens. It says you're currently logged in as a limited user. Mojopack requires standard administrator access. So we can just run this as an administrator. However, you get this error message right here that says Mojopack requires that only one user be logged in at a time. Please reboot the host PC and try again. Now, I don't have multiple user accounts logged in at all. So this is definitely, you know, a, a compatibility related error message here, because obviously this is not going to, to be able to function properly with a newer version of Windows than, than Windows XP. That's what it was designed to function with. I assume if Mojo Pack, uh, you know, if, if RingCube decided to develop it uh, after like Windows Vista and Windows uh, 7 came out, they would have probably updated it to function with, with those operating systems. I believe there was talk of a Windows Vista compatible version of Mojo Pack, but it never happened as far as I know. And last but not least, just for the fun of it, let's uh, connect the iPod to our Windows XP virtual machine that has been featured uh, many, many times on this channel. We'll go to computer here, and here it is. And we know that this will work just fine because, you know, this is a Windows XP environment. So we can start Mojo Pack. And uh, this will be pretty cool because, you know, I can show you that, uh, and we'll just close out of iTunes here. I can show you that all of the changes we made in the Mojo Pack environment on the Dell Latitude D610 will take effect here. The same programs will be installed. Everything will be just like it was when I uh, logged out of Mojo Pack on the laptop. So we're going to type in our password here. And here we are. And you can see that uh, the Zune theme is actually applied, which is pretty neat. Uh, and that is just a a setting I, I assume it's taking from the from the host computer. Uh, so, but you can see that our wonderful modifications that we've made to the Mojo Pack bar up here, uh, they're still here. And the fact that we enabled notifications to come from the host computer and have them pass through to the Mojo Pack environment, and we can go into Start and All Programs, and we'll have Microsoft Office here. And I can go into my computer and go into the C drive here and uh, we can go to Doom 2, and we can launch Doom 2 if we want to. Interesting though how the Zoom theme doesn't take effect on the sidebar here, like it does, you know, in here on the host computer. That's interesting. But there you have it, guys. That is the follow-up video to the Mojo Pack episode. Uh, this was definitely my mistake, and hopefully if you were confused and you were kind of like, how is this possible? Hopefully this video has cleared some things up for you, and. Uh, showing you what Mojo Pack actually is, which is again, more like a, uh, a sandbox environment, but it's still really cool. And if I had discovered this back when Mojo Pack initially came out, I feel like I would have absolutely used it because this is just a super cool piece of software. The fact that you can essentially run a portable instance of Windows XP from an iPod or another USB drive is super cool and very, very convenient as well. So that's going to wrap it up for today's episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.